Hi, I just launched my game. This is the first thing that happened. Uh, so let me tell you about my experience with the game so far before I begin. <clears throat> I did a pacifist playthrough, I finished my pacifist playthrough, and then I stopped. I closed the game after reaching the end credits on my pacifist playthrough. I think it went back to the main menu after that, I can't remember either way. I just launched the game for the first time since then, and this is what I'm greeted with. Let's see what happens. Hi. Yeah. I'm sure that that's correct. Yeah. I mean, it's me. Yeah, could restart the game. That's what I named my character on my first playthrough, by the way. The idea is that Flowey, this character Flowey, the flower, has control over, you know, the timeline in, this, in, in the form of the game's save files, basically. And now he's just basically saying that you're the same because you, the player, can just start the game all over from the beginning and do whatever you want. Sort of an obvious little fourth wall breaking, but I don't think I've ever seen any other game do it. Not quite like that. So that's pretty neat. I mean, I'm gonna play the game again. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Sorry. I'm gonna start the game over again. And if it's such a bad thing that I'll be getting rid of all of my relationships with all of these neat characters and good friends, it's fine. Because, I mean, number one, it's not real. And number two, if I really wanted to get autistic about it, I could, uh... I mean, I could just do another pacifist playthrough, right? Later on. Alright. So, <laughs> I've been sitting here on the main menu for a while, so surely you understand the backstory at this point. Humans and monsters lived together and then they didn't now the monsters are underground 761 minutes yeah I don't know what that is I was very thorough in my first play there it's apparently 12.6 hours yeah I like in games like this I'm the kind of person to like go back to every single uh, every single NPC and like you know, loop through their dialogue multiple times to make sure they're not gonna have something new to say and that kind of thing. What's true reset? Uh, I mean... As opposed to just reset? I don't know. So, this is what I was playing, you know, when I got my pacifist... ending. No, I didn't BBBJ, or BBGJ. I actually wasn't as thorough as I could have been, unfortunately. I have heard of a few things that I missed, such as that 
I did call Toriel, like, constantly. Like, every other room I would call Toriel, even though throughout 99% of the game she doesn't answer. Yeah. <laughs> I called her all the time. I really, really wanted her to pick up. Not exactly draconic, no. And, uh... If you could explain, as long as it isn't, like, a story thing. I don't know. Whatever. I guess, since True Reset is my only option now, that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna name the Fallen Human... A. So you're a human child who has fallen down a hole into the underground. And as you'll soon see, again, I'm going to be speaking from the perspective of someone who has done a pacifist playthrough, and anyone who's here at this point should expect spoilers for a pacifist playthrough. Again, I want to stress, if you care about that, you shouldn't be here. Yeah, this game is very effective in the way it presents all of its characters. Um, it's sort of blatantly manipulative in how it gets you to like its various characters, and that's why it very much encourages you to do a pacifist playthrough. Um, the first character that I'll be- one of the first characters that I'll be encountering is a character named Toriel, and as you'll see, she very quickly, I guess you could say, pulls every cheap- every cheap trick in the book to get you to like her. And... unless it's impossible for some reason, I'm gonna be killing her. Oh, okay, Vestaphobe. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, Sneaky Canuck has told me a little bit about that, so I think I know what's going on. Uh, if anybody, like, wants to stop me, you know, if anybody wants to, like, make sure I'm good on that without spoils or anything, I'll take that. So, here's our first character. Should I be reading these voices out loud? I probably should, right? Also agreed with Drek. So, Flowey is basically telling us this is how things work in the underground. This heart represents your soul. Your soul starts off weak, but it can grow strong if you gain a lot of LV. Which is, of course, love. Of course we want some love. And Flyby's gonna share some love with us. By giving us these friendliness pellets. Oh my god, we're saved. Do voice acting as gratingly as possible. Oh, I'm tempted, dude. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm Toriel, caretaker of the ruins. <laughs> That's what she sounds like, canonically. Listen, she comes through here every day to see if anyone's fallen down. Think about that. How diligent she must be. How caring she must be of other people. That... Th that she comes through here every day, and she probably never finds anybody. This is probably the first time she's ever found anyone, for all we know. And she still just comes by all the time, just in case. That's how much she cares. 
Yeah, she there. She said it herself. We're the first one to come come here in a long time. Agreed, Nick. Okay, so she's gonna guide us through the catacombs. She's our real friend. Flowey was betraying us. Flowey was vicious and evil, but we can actually trust Toriel. She's already shown that through her actions, because she saved us. So, uh, here's this place. The ruins. Diversions and door keys. We'll have to adjust ourselves to the sight of these puzzles if we're going to make it in the ruins. <laughs> Drag. So Toriel's already gone ahead and labeled the switches for us. Yes, full true pacifist vibes. I'm missing out on a lot of chat, by the way. It's going pretty quick, which is surprising. I expected people to really shuffle out when I started to play this game, but uh, yeah. So right here, Toriel is going to show us how to fight. And she's... She's immediately teaching us pacifism. She's saying, just talk. Just talk to the dummy. You don't need to fight. Wait. Guys, you can't kill a dummy. It's not alive. What, you can't kill a dummy? It's perfectly reasonable. Skeletons are alive. Don't tell me otherwise. Well, here we go again. Toriel's showing me the ropes. Look how happy she is when she's talking to you. Just the look. Look at her portrait up in the top. She's so happy just to be talking to you. Okay, here we go. <sighs> so, uh, Toriel is trying to tell us that, uh, you know, even if it's just a dummy, I mean, you know, it's practice, obviously, but, uh, you know, we, sh we, we shouldn't fight the dummy. We should practice talking to it and just waiting for Toriel to get there and help us out, because that's how she plans on doing things, right? She wants to teach us that it's bad to fight, but, uh, I mean, I need to fight for pa uh, for genocide but uh <laughs> i mean honestly it's i don't really want to i don't even want to fight the dummy uh, toriel is going to be disappointed in me uh i'm sorry oh yeah oh Uh, well, let's just solve this puzzle. Oh, Froggit. I mean, Froggit's kind of getting uppity. It's alright. Honestly, I think we're just putting Froggit out of its misery. No big deal. No problem. Yeah, I killed the dummy. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Uh. Oh, I may owe a dead frog. Uh. 
Uh, it's a... uh, thank you, Toriel. She she thinks I've done excellently, even though I killed the dummy. <laughs> I like the music that plays during this. And the frog. She doesn't know I killed the frog. Oh, there she is. <clears throat> she didn't leave us. She just wants us to learn to take care of ourselves even if it even if it's scary I know me too seeking she really really wants a child to raise said us She gave us a cell phone, so... I mean, I'm gonna flirt with her, but I have to say hi first. Hello. I'm sure you do, Drake. So cute. I'm pretty sure she's paying for it hidden. <clears throat> oh man. I love <laughs> I love that she calls you the second you enter the next room. Let's save here. Alright. You know, I never... Did I come to this room on my first playthrough? Listen, I'm a free spirit, Silver Sif. I guess they are sneaky. Can I take another? Yeah. It is disgusting. Oh. Uh, I don't... I just need to. That's it. No, I'm not gonna take all of it. I just took two, alright? I don't need more than two anyway. Oh, whims... Uh, just go. No, Drek, I'm not going to take the rest. I'm not going to take a third. I don't want to take any more, y'all. I've already taken my fair... I've taken more than my fair share. Mustard seed. Frog it. I need... Just... Okay. Are we good? Listen, you guys, you guys are really, really asking the unreasonable of me here. How many more of these are there? Uh, uh, these are all very good monsters 
but... I mean, if you think about it, like, look at Wimson's face. Wimson isn't having a good time. I'm... I'm putting them out of their misery, okay? It's a good thing that I'm doing. I think so, Kamez. Yeah, I think that's how Sneaky explained it to me. Why? Like, it's worse that it survives the hit. Because now its death is painful. I am blind, Silver Sif. Oh, man. Okay, I answered Cinnamon in my first playthrough, so let's go with Butterscotch. Oh, man. Okay, so she asked the same thing, but for Cinnamon. Right. Right. Oh, man. Zmeon, you don't have to say it like that. Yes, I did, Glass. When all of my friends that I had made throughout my journey came to my rescue, and then I came to their rescue. It was it was emotional. <clears throat> Wait. Oh no. Uh I mean, you can encounter Napstablook later in the game, right? So... Uh... I'm just gonna check him out. This is Napstablook 10 and 10. That's pretty good. Very good attack, as you can see. I actually did get hit. I mean, it's probably... Uh, I was thinking maybe it wouldn't do anything. Because, uh... You know, he's a ghost. Well, Naps to Blook is fine. Uh. Is this it? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Napstablook can't die, as I predicted. Because Napstablook is a ghost, and therefore incorporeal. <laughs> That's like the best bot message I've ever seen. <laughs> Oh man, always makes me smile. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was so funny. Okay. No, no, I didn't miss the spider bake sale. 
the place where I can get food made by spiders for spiders of spiders. Four frogs? Yeah, we have these enemies now. <clears throat> They're not doing a lot. <clears throat> Tutorial. Okay. Tutorials giving us good advice. Yeah, if I recall correctly, at least in the pacifist route, you encounter an Abstablook here again. Of course, that's what happened when I didn't attack him to begin with. Vegetoid came out of the earth. <clears throat> I mean, Vegetoid looks kind of evil. Look at look at Vegetoid's face. You know what I'm saying? It's we might be doing an okay thing here. I mean, though, if you talk to Vegetoid, Vegetoid feeds you healthy food. So... I mean... Well, don't worry about it. What? Oh! Oh yeah, you have to actually check... Somewhere it says which switch you're supposed to hit. I, like, completely forgot how this works. This is probably what tells you... Yeah, blue switch, which is here. Red switch. Green switch, which is here. After all, these rooms are only making a rotation. Oh, is that the best room to grind in? I guess I'll go do that. Hopefully, I've heard that the grinding bit can be... A little bit unpleasant, so sorry, people, if that gets boring. But I suppose if you're here, you've already done a uh, a genocide run anyway, so you probably know what's in store. What's up, Shadex? Thank you. He was just making a joke, Vimes. I don't recall seeing these enemies here in the ruins in my first playthrough. I was cave story earlier. Eh, pretty bad. That was like plus two minutes, but that's fine. I finished your run, and that's what counts. I just have lots of love to give. Uh, I don't know Kamez. I don't remember what amounts of gold I got near the beginning of the game. Some later enemies I think I'll be able to tell. Lukes does not want us to pick on, pick on him, but I'm going to. I'm going to check out some of these enemies too, just so I can re refresh myself on their like descriptions. Don't pick on him. All right. You think such so, not soon? Maybe you're right. Luke Skywalker. <gasps> <laughs> God. I didn't realize it until until you heard me say that. Saying it made me realize it. Oh. Why why is it playing that sound?
Oh. Oh, that's a really unpleasant sound. Well, I mean, we're fine for now. Oh, man. I don't know why, it's just so cute that she calls you and you're right there. Just to have a nice time living here, so she's baked us a pie. No snail pie, but. <laughs> she made us a pie, and she's giving us our very own room. In my first playthrough, I immediately got in the bed. I was just trying to examine the bed, but I got in it. And then, uh, if you do that, you go to sleep, and you wake up, and she's come in and turn off the light, and she left the piece of pie for you. Uh, but this time, just to see what's up, I'm gonna go into the kitchen and see what she's up. Oh, she's already sitting in the chair. <coughs> no, I haven't, Draconic. I'm going to sometime. The pie has not cooled down yet. I guess I will go take a nap. So basically she encourages you to do what I naturally did. I've never had snail, no. May on, please. That's a good point, Kamez. I should go try. Too hot to eat. Well, okay then. Got the pie. Man, I like the sound. I mean, you know, the fact that there's a different version of the song when the light's off. <clears throat> I will, Shadex. I checked pretty much every- I was extremely thorough in my pacifist playthrough, so unless... Like, the spot next to the pie is different now that I've killed stuff, you know. This is very close to the beginning, Melwalt. Uh, someone pointed out something, and this might be, uh... Actually, just vacuumed it, and it's fine. Uh, this might be obvious or something, but I didn't catch it when I played the first time. I saw somebody talk about it in some stream later. Uh, this box of kids' shoes in a disparity of sizes. They were thinking that those might be the shoes of the other kids who the souls came from. The souls that Asgore has. <clears throat> and that's kind of dark, which, you know, it's supposed to be. Uh, 
Oh, it does me too, Shadax, now that you mention it. Uh, one thing that occurred to me, though, is that I had always taken for granted that the souls all came from children like you, but that isn't necessarily the case. They could be adults. They could be, you know, they could be all sorts of different people. All of the humans who Asgore got the souls from previously could very well have all been serial killers, and he was just, like, doing a good deed by taking their souls. You never know. <clears throat> all the weapons and armors are theirs as well. Huh. I never thought about that. Yeah, uh, if anyone, if y'all would refrain from saying anything that I wouldn't have gathered from a pacifist playthrough, I appreciate it. It's me. Hey. <laughs> Flower seeds and broken crayons. Let's read Toriel's diary. Why did the skeleton want a friend? Because she was feeling <gasps> bonely. Good jokes. Thank you, Toriel. <clears throat> I don't know if I agree with that assertion, but... I suppose it would be even more important for, uh, for, like, you know, people with fur to wear socks, would it not? Well, let's talk to Toriel. I'm just gonna read which- I'm gonna- I'm gonna kind of read what characters are saying. I hope that doesn't get annoying. People, please feel free to let me know if it is, if it becomes annoying. I'm not gonna do any goofy voices. I'm just gonna read, okay? Is that fine? Let's do it. I want you to know how glad I am to have someone here. There are so many old books I want to share. I want to show you my favorite bug hunting spot. I've also prepared a curriculum for your education. This may come as a surprise to you, but I've always wanted to be a teacher. Actually, perhaps that isn't very surprising. Still, I'm glad to have you living here. Oh, did you want something? What is it? Nothing or when can I go home? Uh, in my first playthrough, I just immediately went to can I go when can I go home? I didn't want to do that because uh, Toriel is so nice to you, and like it's obvious she really is happy to have you there. She's happy for the opportunity to ha like have a kid to take care of, <clears throat> and it was kind of like heartbreaking to immediately immediately go to uh, hey I want to leave. But, like, that's the realistic thing to do, because if you think about it, you know, this kid, at least as far as you know at that point in the game, has, you know, a normal life, and a family, and, uh, you know, just a life that they should be getting back to on the surface. So, regardless of politeness or anything like that, it makes perfect sense to be like, uh, when can I go home? So, yeah. This is your home now. Would you like to hear about this book I'm reading? It's called 72 Uses for Snails. How about it? Uh, again, I immediately defaulted to how to exit the ruins because that's just the realistic choice to make. <clears throat> Read her lines in a goat-like voice. I'm not sure I'm that talented. This time I'm going to say sure just to see what's up. Here's an exciting snail fact. Did you know that snails talk? Really? Slowly? Just kidding. Snails don't talk. <laughs> what? This doesn't make any sense. Interesting. Yeah. I'm just gonna say yeah. Bother me if you need anything else. Okay. 
How to accept the ruins. I... I gotta go do something. And she's off rather quickly. So, let's follow. Oh yeah, let me examine the kitchen. Just to make sure there isn't anything I may have missed in my pacifist playthrough when it comes to examining things. Oh. Everything else, I think, is the same. Okay, this is a history book. Trapped behind the barrier and fearful of further human attacks, we retreated. Far, far into the earth we walked, until we reached the cavern's end. This was our new home, which we named... Home. As great as our king is, he is pretty lousy at names. <clears throat> The end of the tools have been filed down to make them safer. That's cute. I like that detail a lot. Uh, let me do something real quick. Hopefully this isn't too, like, dumb or intrusive of a thing that I'm doing. I'm going to put chat up on screen. I normally don't do that because it's uh, just a little cluttered, like, when I'm speedrunning, but... We'll see. Alright, y'all. So... At this point, the game has been rather unsubtle in its attempts to make Toriel likable. She's been very generous to us and has saved our life and has taught us the virtues of being a good person. <clears throat> and that kind of thing. So, Toriel is basically just telling us straight up now that she doesn't want anyone to leave because it's dangerous, so she's going to destroy the exit. Asgore. Is Asgore was Asgore in red before? Okay. <laughs> Just making sure, nick of time. I like how even now, uh, when she decides to fight you, the game very, very blatantly, no subtlety at all, just straight up says that she's doing it out of concern. Like, she's saying, hey, if you can't beat me here, you wouldn't be able to survive out there anyway. Uh, for anyone who may be watching who has not done a pacifist playthrough or, you know, just isn't too familiar with the game in general, number one, again, I encourage you to reconsider your decision to watch this. Number two, uh, if Toriel gets you down to low HP, she'll stop attacking you. She'll, like, she'll, she'll send out an attack and then all of her projectiles will just, like, completely miss you no matter what even if you attempt to get hit by them you can't get hit she doesn't want to hurt she doesn't want to kill you but uh you know let's just do this
No. No, 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 no. She... No, 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 no. She has 80-80. Dude, she has 80 and 80. She has 80 attack, 80 defense, y'all. If you, if you check on her, nobody in the game except for Asgore, who is equal to her, no better, has 80 and 80. How did that happen? Oh, mm. Mm -hmm. Don't smile like that. Oh, God. What is that? Is that her? Oh. That look on her sprite, the look, the look on her face when you first hit her, it's like, she's shocked. I'm gonna pour myself a Diet Coke real quick. I don't know. It's uh it's one thirty in the morning. So I guess I better keep going. <clears throat> <clears throat> 